Wilson police shot and killed an unarmed man. They'd mistaken the table leg that Harry Stanley was carrying for a sawn-off shotgun. For nine hours, Harry's body lay on the street and it took 18 hours for Harry's wife to be told that he was dead. Well, Harry's family is still waiting to find out if anyone will be prosecuted. Richard Gaysford is in Hackney for us, where the shooting took place. Richard, good morning to you. Good morning, Anne. Well, it all started when Harry Stanley went for a drink with his brother. And his brother gave him a package just a little like this. As you say, it's a table leg, but it was actually wrapped up in plastic like this. And uh, Harry went on his way. Well, he was walking down Victoria Park Road here. But before he got home, he stopped at the Alexandra pub, which is just a little further down, to have a lemonade. Now, he's not a regular in that pub, and uh, no one really knew him. And as he was leaving, someone thought that this was a gun among the police to tell them so. Well, the police just happened to have two armed police officers in the area for another incident. And as Harry was just walking down into Fremont Street here, just 100 yards from his home, the police confronted him, two armed officers. And we think it went something like this. They said, stop armed police. And at that point, we're not sure exactly what happened, but what we do know is that Harry was then shot twice, once in the head, once in the leg. And he actually lay dying here on the ground where his family have put a permanent memorial a year on. They still have no answers. They've had no apology and no sign of a prosecution act. OK, Richard, well, thank you very much. Joining me, watching that, a bit distressed, I think, Harry's widow, Irene, and his youngest son, Jamie. Thanks, both of you, for coming in. Um, that's where Richard took us up to, if we can go back. I know we said at the very beginning, it was a long time before you found out. It was actually 18 hours before I found out that he was dead. And then what happened? They told me that my, uh, my husband had been killed. Mm. And uh, after that, the, the police were in the house. It, we, could, we didn't have time to grieve for anything. And then they interviewed you for a while? Yeah, well, I was ill. I had to get a doctor and that out to see me. I'm not surprised. How have your family and you coped for this? It's nearly a year now, because it was September the 22nd last yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. How have you dealt with it all? Uh, it's been hard, you know, because a part of our life's missing. But I think the thing is, it's keeping us going because we're fighting for justice. Mm. I think that's, you know, for the whole lot of and us. You, you, you are fighting for justice. What have the police done since that time? Have, have they apologised? Has anything been said? A uh, sorry police come out two days after and, and they said they were sorry, but it was actually the Metropolitan Police that killed them. Mm. I never get any apologies from them. Nothing at all? No. What's your opinion on the way this whole thing's been handled? Well, I think straight away after my husband got shot, the two police officers should have been suspended for the actual force. But actually, they only got suspended from the firearms duty and got put on office duty, and I don't think it was right. I think they should have been suspended. The most worrying thing is, is that that seems to me, I don't, I mean, I don't know about it, but that he was lying in the street for nine yeah. hours and only 100 yards from your house. Yeah, only live round the corner. I actually had the two gunshots, but I didn't know it was my husband. And when he had his, did he have his passport on him? He had his passport and his birth certificate in his pocket. And he had uh, my address on it and he had his brother's phone number. And I just don't understand how it took 18 hours. No. And he said he was an Irish man as well, by the way. And we couldn't tell from your accent that your husband was the same. Scottish. You're both Scottish. Mm -hmm. Jamie, how old were you when all this happened? I was 18 at the 18. time. 18. And how's it affected you? Uh, hit me hard. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been very involved though with this I... fight for to get some sort of justice, get something sorted out. Um, I want justice. Yeah. What 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 do you want? I want to get justice for my dad, but. I ain't really sure, really. Mm. If, I mean, the CPS decides at the end of this month that it isn't going to prosecute, are you, what's, is that it then? You, well, that, if, if there's not a trial, then we have an inquest or a public inquiry. Right. Well, our hearts go out to both of you, and, um, and thank you very much, very brave, to come in and talk to us. Thanks thank very much. We'll speak to you a bit later again yes. in the programme. Right, it's uh, 20 minutes uh, past six. Very good morning to you if you're just joining us. We're going to have uh, some sport right now because the football season has uh, only just begun. But